Hi, this is Stephen Brower from Mountain Valley Community College. This is for Computer Literacy Summer 2017, and this is meant to be as an addendum to the Chapter 4 on Networks. When I teach uh, a chapter on networking in a classroom, what I do is I draw <laughs> I draw a picture of my setup that I have uh, at home, and I use it as a vehicle to talk about certain uh, well, networking uh, concepts. Now, uh, the reason why I say old is I I'm, kind of want to talk a little bit about this. Um, I don't have this anymore, but I do want to talk about uh, the setup. So um, at home, um, I have a dedicated phone line, and I use uh, DSL. I do not have cable, um, and uh, I live in a part of New Jersey where Verizon well, I get wireless service for Verizon, but not wired. I have a use CenturyLink. And so that also means that fiber is not, uh, or Fios, whatever you want to call it, is not an option through uh, CenturyLink. So I am uh, using uh, DSL for my connection um, to the Internet. Now, what I used to have was a dedicated DSL modem. And the idea behind the modem is that it would plug into the phone jack, and it had in it one Ethernet port, and the idea is you could plug a computer straight into the port, one computer. If you wanted to use beyond that, you had to get your own router in order to do that, and that's what I did. So um, now the, the actual router I have is not this picture here, um, but I do have a Linksys router. It just looks different uh, than this one, and the router um, is plugged into the DSL modem. Uh, what the router allows is I can have multiple devices. So I have my laptop, tablet, iPhone, desktop computer, all connected to this. And so they all can get out onto the Internet. So by doing this, it's that this, in a sense, like dedicated line, is now being shared across uh, four computers uh, that I have. Um, this router has four Ethernet ports in the back of it. And at the present moment, one is being used by the desktop uh, computer I have. So there actually are three ports that are available on this router. Um, and these other devices go wirelessly um, for, for Wi-Fi. Um, now, what I did have, and the reason why I'm using the word old, uh, is an issue I have is that this modem died. And I uh, did some troubleshooting and figured out it was the actual modem when I contacted uh, CenturyLink, they're like, that's older than Vert. Uh, we're going to send you a new one. Well, the newfangled one that they sent me was a Wi-Fi router and DSL modem. Um, and so that means what I could have done at that point is I could have redirected all of my computers over to this new um, router. Um, I just, at the time, felt like it was way too much effort. And I said, well, you know what? I'll leave it the way it is. So this new router that I have does have four jacks in the back. One jack, um, the, there's a cable from the old router that I have. Actually, I'm saying old, but the existing router that I had. Um, I remember that router had three um, spots free because the, this desktop computer was taking up one. There were three left over. So I still could add three um, computers via Ethernet here. I had three computers via Ethernet here, and then I could have multiple computers going um, wirelessly. Something I did not mention before is that the wireless router I have, well, well let me talk about what I used to have even, that's not in the picture here. I used to have a printer hooked to this computer here, and I had it shared. And so that this way, the other computers that I had could print to the printer that was on there. Well, at one point in time, when I updated this router to a, a, a later one, um, the later one that I got has an additional two USB ports. So I have a non-networked printer. I went cheap. And the non-networked printer is plugged into a USB port on this router. Uh, I also have a, um, a USB drive plugged into a USB port on the router. And because they're connected to the router, it's shared by everything that uh, connects to it. Um, Okay, now, um, so all these four computers are sharing this uh, internet connection, um, and one thing I do want to talk about are, are speeds. So the um, DSL that I have, um, technically it's a DSL, I just kind of did it check and scratch over here, the A being asynchronous, and the asynchronous meaning that there's a difference. 
my download speed is 3 megabits per second. My upload speed is 0.5 megabits per second. Uh, by the way, the prior video I did was 54 megs, so you can imagine it took a while to download. Um, now, I have an underline under the B here. This B is a little B. It's bits. When I talk about that file that I had, that video, that was 54 megabytes. Well, there's 8 bits in a byte. So that means I'm not getting 3 megabytes per second download speed. I'm getting 3 megabits per second download speed. So if I take this value and divide it by 8, then that's how many megabytes that uh, download speed that I'm, I'm getting per second. Um, so one thing to be mindful of when you are, let's say, comparing ISPs um, is that they give the speed in, uh, in terms of bits, not in terms of bytes. Um, one thing I want to show real quick, let me switch over here to a browser. Um, now, there are other sites than just this one. So, yeah, I am mentioning this one, but there are other ones that are out there. And there are speed test sites that will basically check your connection and see how, how quickly it true is. Um, ooh. Okay, I'm going to have to go and read that. I, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption things are okay. I really should have read that before I do it, but I'm in the middle of a video. So let me just do the begin test. Now, this one, this website that I'm on, has three components. And the first component is what's called a ping speed. And basically, it's, um, it's trying to connect to um, a, a DNS server and just to you know, get a, a name resolved. The second piece is doing, which is what it's doing now, is the download speed. And when this is finally done, it'll give the average. And hopefully, it's going to be as close to 3 as possible. Um, 2.96. That's, that's not bad. <laughs> okay. Um, and then it's going to do the upload speed. And this is, um, this is going to be sad. Um, so remember, they're telling me I'm supposed to get 0.5 megabits per second. And so 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.37. Uh, let's see what the final average comes in. Um, and it's 0.38 megabits per second. Oh God, that is pitiful. Um, did I mention I had a 54 megabit, megabyte uh, video that I had to upload? <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, the one other aspect I want to talk about in terms of networking is a router versus switch. Um, and the idea in terms of a switch is that when information is coming out from here, it will only send it directly to the computer that needs it. Um, if we had what was called a hub, then all the computers would receive the information. But in a switch, only the one that's supposed to receive the information is receiving it. So, uh, and this is going to almost seem silly, but suppose I'm on my laptop and I'm in Google, and then I do a search. So I submit, um, basically I send a packet up that has my search criteria. It eventually goes up. Uh, I guess to Google, they do the search and they start to send the results back. When the results come back to here, because this is a switch and it knows the exact computer it's supposed to go to, it's only going to send the results to my laptop. It's not going to broadcast them. Um, so, in, the, in you know, in terms of when you go to a store and you're looking for, um, you know, like a router, it technically is a router switch. Um, it's just that they only you know, refer to it uh, in sense as, as a router. Um, so this one here is technically a, uh, a router switch modem or DSL modem. Okay. Um, I think in terms of the networking stuff, I covered, um, I'm probably forgetting something. So let me just go and do this other side, um, which is not going to be networking, but I do want to talk about it. Um, so in my living room, I have uh, a big TV. And the TV I have is an old TV. Uh, it is a flat screen, but it, it's an old TV, and it's not Internet enabled. Um, so if I want to do something like stream Netflix, by default, the TV can't do it. Well, this TV is the monitor for this desktop computer that I have. So I only have one monitor hooked to this, and it's this really, really big monitor. Uh, it's huge. Um, so this way, if I want to then go stream from Netflix, I'm using this computer. And so, you know, the, the video is going to be you know, transmitting over and then it's displaying uh, here on the screen. So um, one thing that in a sense what I'm doing by me hooking um, the I'm with the HDMI cable, by hooking the, the, the TV, quote, as a monitor to this PC, 
then um, I basically extended the functionality of it. Now, uh, I wasn't sure if I had said this before, but I do not have cable. Um, and but what I do have are rabbit ears. So I actually have, these are the old fashioned rabbit ears. And actually, yes, sometimes I have to get up out of my chair and I have to redirect them for certain stations. The rabbit ears that I have, and I can get to Philly stations, most of the Philly stations I can get, the rabbit ears I have are connected to, um, and what I have is I'm, I have a USB one. I have a USB um, HD TV tuner, um, well, TV tuner. And, um, and so the antenna is plugged into it. It's plugged in via USB uh, B to my computer. Now, one of the things I have in here is Windows Media Center. So when I have Windows Media Center, one of the things I can do is, you know, basically get the signal from uh, the antenna, um, and then that's what gets displayed on the screen. So I'm using this monitor as my TV, where I'm using the rabbit ears, and I'm going through my computer to do that. The other thing I'm doing, I'm using this computer like a DVR. So um, this, pro this computer runs 24-7. And my programs are pro programmed in to record it. Uh, and then later when I watch them, of course, I'm watching it on uh, the big TV. Occasionally what I'll do is I'll clear up some space on, on this computer and I'll move some of the videos to this share drive so that I could access those videos that I have elsewhere. Now, I could have done a share here, but what I was finding performance was pretty bad. But when I put the videos here, the performance wasn't, well, the performance wasn't great, but it wasn't as bad. Um, so, um, now, this does mean that I have this computer that's dedicated in my living room, and it doesn't do anything else than act really as sort of the TV and then for the streaming. Um, and so there is, cost-wise, this is probably inefficient, because compared to a DVR, it's a lot more expensive. Um, but it, it just, it works for me. Um, okay, I think I hit the highlights of everything I wanted.